A very common Power BI problem is that the level of detail of your columns is too high. And a time column can be very specific, up to milliseconds. In this video, I'm going to show you some methods on how you can remove millisecond portions from time values. Let's see how that works. So if you have some time values, it can have so much detail that your data model can explode in size. For instance, I have a column with time values here. And on first inspection, it seems as if there's only hours, minutes, and seconds. However, if you click on one of these values, you can find that there is milliseconds in here as well. If you don't need those, I recommend getting rid of them. So how do you usually know if there are milliseconds in your time value? One of the easiest way to do that is to add a custom column. In that custom column, we can use the time to text function, select your time column. And if you don't specify anything, I'm to text, then this is what you'll get. You'll only see the hour and the minutes. However, if you would add a formatting string as a second argument, like a capital letter T, you're going to find that it has hours, minutes, uh, and seconds here, but still you're missing the level of detail for the milliseconds. If you need that as well, let me show you a way and how you can do that. First of all, how do you know these formatting strings? If you want to know these, you can go to Power Query How. If you go to the homepage and then write time to text, you can then navigate to the page time to text. Scroll down a little bit and here you'll find all of the available formatting strings. So we were just looking at capital letter T, that is this formatting string right there. But if you also want to show the fractions of a second, you're going to need some more. So fractions of a second are represented by the F right there. So depending on how many, um, how many decimals you need for your values, you're going to need to provide more of these F values. Let's see how that works for us. So if we want to specify everything, we could have hours, minutes, seconds, and if we then press OK, everything stays the same. But we can then also spy, uh, specify multiple milliseconds by doing this. As you can see, these time values have a lot of milliseconds available. So how can you remove these? The first method we can use is using a formatting string. So if we only specify the hours, minutes, and seconds, there you have it. All that's left to do is then say time from because our previous value was text. We then close our first bracket, say type time. And if I then close this, then instead of having a very specific time value with the fractions, I actually only get the main value. Okay, what is another method we could use? We could also make use of rounding. So let's, for example, say we have these same values. We could make use of the time function. And the time function has three arguments. The first one is hours, then minutes, then seconds. So if you want to specify how many hours we have, we can write time hour, specify the time column, close our bracket. Second argument would be time dot minutes. We specify the time column. Here we go. Now here's the last one. If I'm going to get a second, then it's going to be too specific. So for instance, if I say time second, and I could do that on the time column, Close everything down, and round it time. We could see what that does. So I now get my milliseconds here as well. So these seconds, I actually need to make sure that they are rounded, or if we just get the, the whole number version. So what we can do is instead of just providing the time second to the third argument of time, I could also write in 64 from then close my brackets again. And instead of getting then a uh, fractional second like here, we now get only the part with the seconds. So that's the second method that we could do. And we can specify type time. So what is the third method you could use? You can choose any of these that you prefer. We could also get the remainder. So the remainder, uh, the, the fractional part, we can also use the duration function for this. For instance, if I would say I have time seconds from my time value, I would normally only get this, this part right there. Now, instead of 
extracting only the seconds portion, I could also remove the fractional portion. And I can do that as follows. So since I have a value here, I could now use the number mod function. And the number mod function allows you to divide the value you give it by a certain value. And it will give you back the remainder that it cannot divide it by. So if I would divide this by one, close my brackets, I would divide 15.018 by one. That would be 15.018. So it will remove the 15 portion, as you can see here. Now that's great because we can use this value in the duration function. How does that work? So I can then say duration. I only want to remove the milliseconds. So I have uh, duration asks for days first, zero days, zero hours, zero minutes. But that last part that we just calculated could be the millisecond duration. So if I provide that as the fourth argument of duration, I'm going to get this duration value. Now, only the only thing that is left to do is to take our time value. So we take time and we subtract the duration with only the milliseconds. Here we go. And as you can see, that's how we can just simply remove our milliseconds and make sure that the column that we have is much smaller. And in principle, those are three important techniques to remove the milliseconds portion. This is complex if you don't know any of the M language details. However, if you want to learn a bit more of this, we have an excellent book on the M language, The Definitive Guide to Power Query M. I recommend getting it if you want to do a bit more than just the user interface. I hope this was useful. If it was, give me a thumbs up and I'll uh, see you in the next video. <laughs>